Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about endoscopic surgery. Laparoscopic surgery is a minimally invasive surgical procedure that allows the surgeon to access cavities and internal organs in the body by making very small incisions or through natural body openings such as the mouth, nostrils or anus. This technique allows the surgeon to see inside the patient's body and the process through a much smaller incision than it is required by traditional open surgery. This video will explain to you everything related to laparoscopic surgery, its benefits, when to resort to it, and some of the risks that may accompany it. So our role today is to answer most of your questions regarding endoscopic surgery. Today we have Dr. Park, who is the leading doctor at Bundang Chasek Hospital. He's going to discuss with us everything about endoscopic surgery from an experienced medical point of view. Hi, I'm Ume. Before we start, please subscribe to our channel so the next time you'll be updated with our new releases. Hello, Dr. Park. Can you please present yourself? My name is Sing Jung Park. I'm a gastroenterologist. And gastroenterology is a department that treats diseases in the stomach, colon, pancreas, and gallbladder. Diagnosis and medical treatment using drugs have been our main specialties. Recently, however, our field has expanded to treatment of gastric cancer or colon cancer with endoscopic procedures rather than opting for surgery. Mm. So, Dr. Park, the first question, so why do we need endoscopic diagnostic? Before asking why we need to do gastroscopy, we first have to focus on what we are interested in the most, and that would be living long or healthy lives. But the biggest threat to this is cancer. So the main problem is how to make it so that gastric or colon cancers are detected and treated early so as to live long and healthy lives. Gastroscopy is the best method to detect gastric cancer, and colonoscopy is the best method to detect colorectal cancer. And that's the reason why we need to do endoscopic examinations. So what is the diagnostic cycle and what kind of examination is needed? When setting the schedule or interval of examinations, we need to consider both the issue of how often the disease occurs in one particular country and how much it costs to treat that disease. In the case of Korea, gastroscopy is recommended once every two years for adults over the age of 40 and colonoscopy once every five years for adults over the age of 50. What this means is that in order to detect gastric cancer within the range that could be treated, examinations must be done at intervals of about two years. You may ask, why is it five years instead of two years for colon cancer? In contrast to gastric cancer, which develops rather quickly, colorectal cancer tends to progress in a step-by-step -step fashion. So an interval of five years is enough for it to be detected at a treatable state. One more thing to consider is that it will tend to cost more and be likely to cause more harm to the patient's body if treatment requires major surgery. Therefore, it would be more beneficial to opt for simpler treatment methods. That's why we have guidelines recommending gastroscopy once a year and colonoscopy for every three years for patients with colon polyps. Other factors that need to be considered as well include the patient's individual risk of developing cancer, their economic status, and so on. Okay, so is it possible to treat gastric and colon cancer by using endoscopic surgery? Yes, that's right. Treatment of gastric and colorectal cancer with gastroscopy or colonoscopy has been possible for about 20 years. Before that, the standard treatment method was surgery, which requires putting the patient under general anesthesia, opening the stomach with a scalpel, and removing parts of the internal organs. However, in certain conditions, an endoscopic procedure may be sufficient enough, eliminating the need to perform general anesthesia and making an incision in the stomach. The endoscope is inserted through the mouth for stomach procedures or through the anus for colon procedures, and the lesion can be easily removed by such methods. 
In order to be able to perform such endoscopic procedures, certain conditions must be met. For stomach cancers, early gastric cancers, and for colon cancer, early colorectal cancers. To be more specific, gastric or colon cancers either confined to the mucous membrane, or if maybe a little deeper, invading the first part of the submucosal layer can be treated this way. To show you that, here's what the wall of the stomach or colon looks like. So this layer is the mucosa. This is the submucosa. This is the muscle layer. And this is the serous layer. The subserosal layer. And this is how the stomach wall is structured. If the cancer is confined to the mucous membrane, or if it invades less than one-third of the submucosal layer, it is considered possible to be completely resected with an endoscope. The same holds true for colon cancer as well. The question is, then, what if it invades more than that and penetrates deeper than the submucosal layer or even into the muscle layer? This is early gastric cancer we are talking about. Early gastric cancer refers to gastric cancer that is invaded only into the mucosal or submucosal layer. And advanced gastric cancer refers to gastric cancer that has invaded the muscle layer. But if we resect the muscular layer, the bowel perforation occurs. This causes peritonitis and prevents the perforated site wound from healing later on, causing serious problems. What's more serious is that the lymphoid tissue is profoundly developed in the submucosal layer. A few cancer cells unwittingly escape through those lymphoid tissues if it has invaded the submucosal or muscle layer and spread to other parts of the body such as lymph nodes, liver, lungs, and bones. But you can't treat those cancer cells that have metastasized to other organs by resecting just the primary cancer site. Therefore, primary stomach cancer site plus the lymph nodes surrounding the stomach must be removed as well in order to prevent recurrence of cancer. So, a complete cure can be achieved by resecting only when gastric cancer has invaded less than the first one-third of the submucosal layer, because however there is a chance that it has already metastasized. The same is true for colon cancer. So in these conditions, endoscopy would be a viable treatment method. Dr. how is the endoscopic mucosal resection performed? Yes. You can see here, cancer treatment is performed the same way in both gastroscopy and colonoscopy. General anesthesia is not typically required, and endoscopy is done after the patient with a sedative and is half asleep. The duration of the procedure can range from 15 to 90 minutes, but is usually completed within 30 minutes. The procedure is performed by injecting the cancerous lesion like this, injecting into the mucosa, and this layer allows the lesion to swell. It makes enough space so that the muscle is not injured during the excision process. So after fluid is injected, an endoscopic knife is used to excise the surrounding area like this. And then the layer beneath the lesion is cut. And the cancer mass is removed. To summarize, the cancer lesion is injected like this. And then this much surrounding area is, is excised with a knife. Mm. So after endoscopic mucosal resection, is it possible to do endoscopic surgery? I suppose this is a question about what happens next after endoscopic, gastric, or colon cancer treatment. 
No additional treatment is required after endoscopic resection unless microscopic pathology shows that the invasion depth is quite deep. There's no need for additional surgery, and the patient is considered to be completely cured if it does not reoccur after five years of observation. But the problem is, if the invasion depth turns out to be deep, that is, if it has invaded the second layer of the submucosal layer, or even the muscle layer, the probability of reoccurrence can be as high as 30% in such cases. Therefore, additional surgery is recommended. By surgery, I mean real surgery, which requires resecting a part of the stomach under general anesthesia. These operations can be done through laparoscopic surgery. Laparoscopic surgery is a method of performing surgery through a few holes in the skin instead of making a large incision in the skin. If cancer lesions are found around previous resection sites, using endoscopy for retreatment can be considered as well. Okay, so my last question, how can we prevent colon cancer and mm -hmm. gastro cancer? When we're talking about stomach or colon cancer prevention, we mostly focus on what we can do to prevent it. When it comes to gastric cancer, we think about which foods to not eat and which nutrient supplements we should take more of. For colon cancer, we think about getting a lot of exercise, living a certain lifestyle, and so on. Stuff that is relatively well known, so to speak. For example, avoiding salty or burnt foods, and eating a lot of vegetables and fruits for gastric cancers, and exercising a lot, drinking less alcohol, quitting smoking, and avoiding fatty foods for colorectal cancers. Despite such efforts, it is hard to prevent gastric and colorectal cancer in most cases. However, that's not to say that you shouldn't try it at all. What we consider to be healthy, drinking less, quitting smoking, exercising a lot, and all the things that I just mentioned beforehand, those things we should do. But most importantly, detecting cancer early on is the best way to avoid or treat cancer. One of the most important ways to prevent colorectal cancer is to find and remove colorectal polyps as quickly as possible because they grow and turn into cancer lesions. So patients over the age of 50 should get regular exams once every three years for people with adenoma and once every five years for people without adenomas. And removing those adenomas should help prevent colon cancer. As for stomach cancer, avoiding salty or burnt foods, drinking less alcohol, quitting smoking, and eating a lot of vegetables and fruits would help. But what's more important than that, getting gastroscopy once every one or two years, regardless of whether there are any symptoms or not, would be the surest way to live without worrying about gastric cancers. Thank you so much, Dr. Pike. Thank you. Today we learned many things about endoscopic surgery, and the doctor explained in detail everything related to it, including its benefits and what distinguishes it from open surgery. Thank you for joining us again today at Cloud Hospital TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll respond to you as soon as possible.